appreciate you being here on Birds 365. We're here Johnny Mack. We've got Jimmy Kevsky jumping on board with us from Voice.com. Always good to get JK involved. All right. Uh, I'm going to double down on a couple things we've already discussed. First hour with you, Jim Kemsky. Does this game have the prerequisite juice in your mind? Is there enough buzz about this game or is it underwhelming because it's an AFC opponent? Well, first of all, just so you know, I am very low on gas. I just pulled into a gas station. So when they come up to the car, I'm going to have to tell them to fill it regular as gotcha. an interruption to the show. <laughs> You're not talking about uh, Jordan Davis when you say fill it regular. You're talking about gas. Okay, I got you. We got that covered. I got you. So uh, does it have juice? Yeah, I think this is a – sorry, hang on one second. Can you, can you fill it regular, please? He wasn't kidding, Thank folks. You. <laughs> yes. We, oh. Thank you. This is outstanding radio. Uh, yeah. My apologies. On, on YouTube, no less. I, I, I didn't know you could use a uh, regular in a Lamborghini, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not me. Um, so anyway, yeah, I mean, it's a what? They, there's it's a seven and four team. Um, they're coming off uh, a big win over the Packers uh, on Sunday Night Football. You know, Packers, of course, not. Uh, the team that they have been uh, over the years, but uh, you know, certainly anytime you can beat Aaron Rodgers, that's kind of a big deal. And this is the team that was the one seed in the AFC playoffs last year. Uh, very tough physical team. It's an interesting test. It's not juicy in the same way that it would be if like you're playing the Cowboys or even the Giants maybe at this time of year with, with their 7-4 and four record as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is a legit team. And um you know, it's a one o'clock game, so you know there's a certain limited amount of juice when you have one of those. But uh, yeah, certainly this, this is a big matchup for them, and uh, you know should, they they should provide a, a great test for for the toughness of this Eagles team. I just thought that you know going into this game, you know, it, it with the parity in the league right now, there's a lot of teams. It's not usually it's usually front loaded with a dynasty type of team like the Kansas Cities, the Bills. But I think that this team has started to turn into the the right team at the right time. They're getting better at the right time. Um, they got the quarterback Tannehill the past couple of weeks to put them at the level. Now they're leading the division and they're still going to be up there with as far as being the one of the upper echelon teams. Do you see this Titans team as a threat going into the Super Bowl as far as with, you know, guys like Kansas City and the Bills? So when I look at this matchup with the Titans and Eagles, and I'll, you know, get to your point on the Chiefs and, uh, and Bills, what I see here is a team that is very good running the football, obviously, with Derrick Henry, and they're outstanding stopping the run. And those two things are very, you know, very good things to be able to do in the playoffs. But they can't match up in the same way uh, against the Eagles, Bills, Chiefs, when it comes to the passing game. And that's on both sides of the ball. So, you know, they're just not much of a, of a passing threat. Uh, offensively, their their wide receivers are you know it's Traylon Burks, it's uh, Westbrook, uh, whatever his name is, <laughs> and like you know it's just not a very threatening uh, group. And Ryan Tannehill's fine as a quarterback. Uh, thank you, no, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that again. Ryan Tannehill's fine as a quarterback, but he's certainly you know not a lead. He's middle of the pack in my opinion among you know NFL starting quarterbacks. And then defensively, they've spent a lot of resources on their cornerback position. So they've spent they they used the first round pick on Caleb Farley, who's done for the season. Uh, they used the second round pick on uh, the kid this, this past draft, uh, McCreary. McCreary. Uh, yeah. They used the third round pick on on Elijah Molden. He's their slot corner. And uh, I'm missing somebody here. Uh, but anyway, it's a very young group of cornerbacks that they may be good eventually, but they're still kind of trying to find their way right now. And I think right. that the Eagles can the Eagles, Chiefs, and Bills can all take advantage of of, of matchups. Uh, against those cornerbacks, so yeah, I mean they're 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 a tough, grimy, physical team that you will usually outplay their opponents on the ground, but they just aren't threatening as a passing offense, and they are susceptible to the to the pass on defense. Jimmy, this week uh, a lot of lip service was paid to special teams. Need to be better. <laughs> Got to be yeah. more committed to it. That handicapped our defense. It was used as an explanation, if not an excuse, as to why the defense gave up 33 points short fields and everything. Will we see any evidence of any change this week against Tennessee? We saw them take away Britton Covey's 
kick return duties this past game. Boston Scott filled in in that role. I think it'll be interesting to keep an eye on Saturday when Saturday's the day that they have to announce practice squad call-ups. So it'll be interesting to see if they call up a guy like Devin Allen, for example, either for kick or punt return duties or just to, to use his speed on kick and punt coverage, uh, either as a gunner or just, you know, uh, uh, you know, kick coverage. So, yeah, I think uh, that might be a hint in, in terms of, um, you know, what changes they can make. But as far as bringing in any outside players at this point in the season, we're already past the trade deadline, so you can forget about trading for anyone, obviously. But in terms of bringing in players off the street that can help your special teams, probably just not realistic at, at this point in the season. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you look at the special teams units, and they've had – very consistently, at least one or two, you know, significant, significantly bad plays in almost every game. And this past game, of course, they were trying not to allow the Packers return guy, Keyshawn Nixon. They're trying not to allow him to return kicks. Like they were trying to put it through the end zone. And he was taking kicks out six, seven yards deep out of the end zone, which you don't see that often. And the Packers clearly identified. Uh, an Eagles weakness there and that they, they aren't great at covering kicks. So, yeah, I mean, you look at these special teams units, they're not great covering kicks. They're completely unthreatening uh, on their own kick and punt returns. And they've had some weird gaps otherwise, like a blocked field goal. Uh, I forget who converted a, a fake punt against them. Uh, but, yeah, they, they've been lucky so far this year to, have, to not have had a special teams gaff wreck a game, like lose a game for them this year. And it, it feels a little bit like a ticking time bomb that could go on. So they better get that fixed before the playoffs start because uh, it really has been an issue all year. It absolutely has. You know, I mean, this, it, ticking time bomb, to say the least. I hate to have them lose a game over special teams like that. But, I mean, it, it, it looks like it's coaching. You know, it seems like our special teams coordinator, um, Michael Michael Clay, is, is being outclassed. Looking at the head coaches, at each of these head coaches, younger head coaches, you know, with Titans and with the, um, with the Eagles, you know, Vrabel, uh, he's starting to be, you know, one of the, you know, great coaches in the league. Who do you think is, has the best coaching staff at this point, you know? Yeah, I don't know too much about their staff aside from Vrabel, but obviously his, his success has been, um, I mean, very, very clear and obvious. Uh, you know, Hard nosed football, yeah. No doubt. And like, what, you know, you asked Nick Sirianni what, you know, what this Titans team is all about. You know, I asked A.J. Brown what this Titans team is all about. Uh, after the you know the, the, the win over the Packers on Sunday night, and they basically said you know it's toughness and it's you know it's like it's it's they're just a, they're just a very grimy, tough, physical football team, and that starts with Rabel, and it you know trickles its way down to the players. And Nick Sirianni talked at length about how much respect he had for Rabel when Rabel was a player. He actually was on a coaching staff uh, with the Chiefs. Sirianni was on a coaching staff with the Chiefs when Rabel was still a player. He was captain of that team. And, uh, he, you know, he could tell right away what kind of, um, you know, leader he was just as a player. And that's carried over to him as, as, as a coach. I don't, you know, they, they've gotten more out of their rosters than, um, than you would expect. Like, th- these are not great Titans rosters. Again, they were the one seed of the AFC last year and attacked uh, AFC. So they've gotten, they've gotten a lot. He's gotten a lot out of, out of those teams without having a great roster and a great quarterback. All right, J.K., do you have any concern that the Eagles will – attempt to overemphasize, overfeed A.J. Brown this week because it's a game that understandably means a lot to him. Tennessee traded him, didn't want to pay him, basically yeah. said sorry, but um, he has done a nice job of answering you guys' questions this week on trying to make it sound like it's not something that's as big a deal to him. Uh, Nick Sirianni said the same thing, and then we saw the way he reacted after the Colt game. Uh, any worries that the Eagles will try and take care of their guy, A.J. Brown, that Jalen Hurts will be the key guy making those decisions on where he's going to pull the trigger? Any worries that they'll overfeed A.J. Brown this week? I think it's actually a good idea to try to overfeed him this week, and not because he's playing <laughs> against his old, his old team. But when you look at A.J. Brown in the season that he's had, like he, he's gone through some really hot streaks, and then over the last three, four games, his numbers have tailed off a little bit, and for good reason. Like He had a hurt foot, and he had an illness that affected him in, in you know one or two of those games. 
So I think it would be a good idea to get him back on track. Um, and, you know, having the Pro Bowl, you know, all pro kind of season that he was putting together at one point. And his foot seems to be healthy now. He's recovered from his illness. And again, getting back to the point that they actually have matchups that they, that they can exploit in that Titans secondary. I think it actually is a good idea to get him the ball, but not for the reason because he's playing against his former team. But I just think it makes it actually makes a lot of sense to go to him quite a bit in this game. Well, then you then I mean I kind of counterintuitive to what I was thinking about them running the ball with you know Miles Sanders. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe we can run the ball on him, you know because we did it against the Saints and with that yeah. added dimension of the Hurts. I just think that you know we sh- we need to establish the run to even go over go over the pass and you know I think that's that's the key matchup right now. Miles Sanders yeah. being able to you know keep that offense off the field and stay on our side of the field and time of possession being in our favor as opposed to being the Titans' favor. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think they're going to seek to have balance in this game. And you mentioned the Saints. I think that's an awesome point. Like last year, the Saints had the number one run defense in the NFL when they faced yep. them. And- Eagles ran it 50 times on them in that game. And right. I think they had like you know, 250 some on yards, something, something like that. Uh, they were right around five yards per carry, three touchdowns. And they, so they didn't care that the, that the Saints came in here and they were the number one run defense in the NFL. They ran it anyway, and they did it very successfully. And I think that they can do that against the Titans as well. So, yeah, I don't think you just completely abandon the run. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, balance of taking advantage of those matchups uh, in the secondary and also – you know, not, not going into this game and just saying, OK, well, the Titans are good at stopping the run and that's what they want to do. They want to stop the run. So we're just going to we're just going to play into that, you know, what they want to do to us. So, yeah, they're certainly going to run the ball, in my opinion. Jimmy, I mentioned A.J. and his kind of revenge match against Tennessee Titans. We got another one. Jim Schwartz, senior defensive uh-huh. assistant on the yeah. Titans staff. He doesn't have any connect with the Eagles' current coaching staff, didn't coach with any of them, and he's a couple of years removed from being here in Philadelphia. But he does know a couple of those key guys on the defensive side of the ball, still Fletcher and BG and sure. the like. Um, advantage Titans for having Schwartz or advantage Eagles because they can figure out what Schwartz is going to do. He's not the DC, he's just a senior defensive assistant, but – if you see them play, there are some Schwartz-like characteristics of this defense. Is there an advantage to be had in this matchup? I don't really think there is. Um, I could see if uh, it were the – I could see if, like, Doug Peterson were still the coach and he was fully aware of what Doug Peterson liked to do offensively and could game plan against that. Um, but just in terms of, like, knowing players like Fletcher Cox um, – Brandon Graham, you know, whoever you, you, you want to name. Um, I I don't think, I don't think there are any secrets about, you know, what those guys bring to the table, you know, what, what they sort of are as players uh, from, from Jim Schwartz to any other defensive player across or defensive coach across the league. Um, I think if if anything, the Eagles sort of know what the Titans want to do defensively. The Jim Schwartz's MO in Philadelphia was always first and foremost, stop the run. And then once you stop the run, you can, make uh, the opposing offense one-dimensional and only get after the passer. It was a very simple uh, formula, and I think that's sort of what the Titans' identity – I mean, really, it's been before he even got there, uh, but, you know, it's only been enforced uh, since, since he's gotten there. So I don't know if there's a big advantage either way, uh, but certainly it will. the defense will look familiar uh, to, to Eagles fans from, you know, what he was in Philadelphia for five or six years or whatever it was. Well, let me ask you this then. All right. You look at a team that lost Jordan Davis. They go in and get Joseph, and they get uh, the get Sue. Yeah. And now Davis is back. Do you think he plays? And they put that fifty front end. Can you imagine that having Davis over the nose and Sue and Linville Joseph over the uh, both guards? Is that so a perfect I think, world? I think it, if if they do play Joseph and Davis together. I think Davis gives you more versatility than Joseph. So I think Joseph is the guy that lines up over the nose because it's really all he can do. Oh, okay. And okay. Davis maybe plays, uh, you know, sort of that four eye tech or whatever. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, in, in there with Sue maybe. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see if, if uh, they play those guys together. But I think certainly Davis will get his share of snaps at the nose. 
because you look at what they uh, what they did against the Packers last Sunday night. They only played, I think, 49 snaps total on defense. And yep. Joseph played 30 of those. So that's a high percentage of snaps that he was playing in that game. You know, the Packers really wa- they wanted to run the ball in that game with Aaron Jones and uh, with A.J. Dillon. But they sort of got away from it a little bit whenever the Eagles went to those, you know, odd band fronts with, with Joseph in the middle. So they don't want him playing that high a percentage of snaps. So Davis will take some of those away. And then it'll be interesting to see how Davis's role is expanded. Because before he got hurt against the Steelers, he was almost solely just a nose tackle. And then in that Steelers game, they started to expand his role a little bit. Like he was playing a little, he was playing in, in uh, even man fronts. Um, which he hadn't done all year, and then he got hurt. So we didn't. So it'll be interesting to see like how quickly they go right back to expanding his role, or if they try to ease him back in a little bit. I think they go right into you know expanding his role immediately, right off right off the bat, where they get him in games, they get him on on plays with Joseph, and then also in scenarios where he's uh, playing in four man fronts as well. So I mean, just look at this defensive line now, particularly the defensive tackles. Oof. It's crazy how many big name players they have. Like Absolutely. Jordan Davis, Fletcher Clax, Javon Hargrave, Dominican Sue, uh, Linval Joseph, and you know the I, I guess the, the least um, you know well known player would be Milton Williams. But you have six guys that I mean, you can rotate those guys in and out. One more point to make on on that, by the way, the, the depth that they have at defensive tackle. What Derrick Henry is great at is wearing teams down over the course of a game. Like he really has uh, an effect on defenses, but primarily in the second half is when he's super effective. And I don't know that that's a big advantage against a team like the Eagles that has this kind of depth uh, at defensive tackle. So, um, yeah, I, I think I think the Eagles' depth at, at when they get Jordan Davis back is just one more player that they can add to the fold and uh, they can stay fresh throughout games. So we're going to get you to uh, predict and project on this one too. They're not keeping six defensive tackles up on Sunday. It's not happening. I'll, I'll go out on a limb right now. So oh, they someone will. has to come out <laughs> of the all, mix. But no, right? no, no. All, all six of those guys will be up on you Sunday. You think so? Oh, so, yeah, no doubt. Are, are they going with uh, seven? No, and four outside. So that's ten defensive linemen? Or do you yeah. think where, – where does the extra guy come off on what they usually mix? They're already down to five offensive linemen. If you're going to activate Jordan Davis and not remove one of your defensive linemen, who's coming off the active roster on Sunday? Chauncey Gardner Johnson, I think, will go on IR on Saturday. Uh, I'm not. And- I'm not talking about. I'm talking about on the active roster. No, I get it. I get the it. Playing okay. roster, not the 53. Okay. I'm talking so, about the 48th address on Sunday. So there are five inactives on game day. Are usually Ian Book, the quarterback, Trey Sermon, the fourth running back. Um, uh, Josh Job, a cornerback. Uh, who am I missing here? Um, Josh Sills, offensive lineman, and Sua Opeta, offensive lineman. You're not going to have one of those guys up in favor of one of those defensive tackles, in my opinion. Um, there's just no need for, for any of those guys to, to play. Uh, so yeah, the defense, I think, unless they call up a guy from the practice squad on Saturday, uh, at like safety or something like that. Um, yeah, I, I think the, I think all six of those guys will be up on Sunday. All they have to do is sit down Quinn. Quinn hasn't done anything. Sit Robert Quinn down. That's also, what I was getting true, to. Yeah, yeah. That, that could very well be. Which means uh, Milton might have to slide out a little bit, but I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. I think he could do it if called upon. All yeah. right. The, the game itself, when they get down to it, you said Derek Henry wears teams down. Might be more difficult to do against the Eagles because they've got such depth and versatility on their defensive line. Yep. What if the Eagles are playing from behind? This past week was great. It was 13-0 before you blinked. Now, to the Packers' credit, with a little help from the Eagles, inability to convert on fourth down, uh, they got right back into it. You even went up by a point. Um, Mm -hmm. But if the Eagles fall behind, they're going to throw the ball that much more. Jalen Hurts' running aspect of his game, a little less than it was. How will the Eagles respond if Tennessee grabs an early lead and gets to play from in front? Yeah, I think it's harder to play them defensively if they get a lead on you because they'll just keep hammering the run on you. You, you Ideally, you want to get a lead on them so they have to throw it and try to play from behind. I, as far as the offense goes, I think they're just so good offensively that they can win in a number of different ways. They can run the ball or they can pass it. 
Uh, I think they can still maintain balance uh, if they get behind and still be able to move the football effectively and score. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that this is a team that, you know, isn't screwed, basically, if they get behind in games. Uh, but against this Titans team, it, you know, it, it is it does become more problematic for them defensively. I just think, man, we're, we're, we're good going into this game. This is an impact game, considering the fact that we have a team that's number three against the run, and mm-hmm. we need to run the ball. And the dynamic play of Jalen Hurts will put us over the top. Do you see Jalen Hurts still going with the same style of, 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 of that he had last week, this week, or do they go back to try to protect him again and make him a drop-back passer? Yeah, so the Packers were interesting in the way they played him. They played a lot of man defense early on, and they didn't spy him at all. So <laughs> when he just saw wide open pastures in front of him, he ran. Like he had two rushes for 52 yards at one point. He had like six rushes uh, for over 100 yards at one point. And then the Packers kind of uh, changed what they were doing, and they played a little bit more zone defense. And then the Eagles picked them apart that way through the air. So, you know, it's kind of pick your poison. I think if the Titans try to play a lot of man defense and they uh, aren't spying them and there are wide open lanes for Jalen Hurts to, to take, he'll take them. And if they don't, then I think the Eagles can beat them in other ways. So I think it's really just all kind of in the hands of uh, the way the Titans want to play them. And then the Eagles kind of just play off of that. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think there's necessarily um, going into this game. I don't think that they'll necessarily say, Jalen, we need you to not run as much uh, or we need you to run more or anything like that. It's just kind of, take what the defense has given you and because the Eagles are so good at winning in, in so many different ways offensively. Jimmy, uh, I got a two part question for you. Last thing before we let you run. Um, and both are important. Number one is you do a great job covering day, Eagles day in, day out, breaking Thanks. down stuff, doing it for us uh, here on Birds 365 when we need you. But one of my favorite things above and beyond stick figures, which are great, <laughs> is that you've got your finger on the pulse of the draft pick compensation of okay. free agents lost. Yeah. And you've done none of it this year because <laughs> you've got a 10 and one team to write about. So you've been kind of distracted from one of the things I love best that you do. But I agree with you wholeheartedly. You shouldn't be worrying about who the Eagles are going to get in draft pick compensation because they got a Super Bowl to try and go win this year. But no doubt. How big could their draft pick compensation be? Because the Eagles got a whole hell of a lot of free agents, specifically on this defense right now. And Howie Roseman hasn't been able to get his usual contract extensions done. How huge is this offseason for the Eagles coming up? I, I, I'm we're gonna, I'm gonna. My second part of the question is gonna be, I'm gonna make you pick the game coming yeah. up on Sunday. But I am looking forward a little bit because you're that good at covering it. Uh, how big an offseason? How tough an offseason might this be for the Eagles? Yeah, I mean, they have a lot of players that are scheduled to be free agents, like you said, and it'll be interesting to see how they're able to keep the band back together, so to speak. Mm-hmm. I think they, I think the, the number one priority will be to bring back Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, and he'll probably be pretty expensive. Uh, I think you also probably want to bring back Marcus Epps at the other safety spot uh, to be determined what, what he'll want in free agency. And then at linebacker, you know, both of those starters, T.J. Edwards and Kaiser White, those guys are both scheduled to be free agents. I think it's more likely they try to bring back Edwards than White because you still have Nicobe Dean kind of waiting in the wings. Uh, you know, maybe he steps up and takes on a starting role in 2023 and beyond to be determined. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they have they have basically guys that are going to be free agents all over the book. Isaac Sayamalo is another one. You know, how do you replace him if he goes? Do you just trust guys off the bench like Jack, Jack Driscoll or, um, or, I Joe guess not Pettit. so bad at this point. Uh, do you draft a, you know, and do you basically draft a, a right tackle for the future who can play right guard in the short term? So yeah, it's going to be a very interesting off season to see who they're able to keep and who they kind of have to make tough decisions on to to let you know go off to some other. Miles Sanders is another one, of course, that uh, is going to be a free agent this year. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with him. So yeah, I mean, there's. They're probably more uh, scheduled free agents this year than, or 2023 than, than they've had in a long time. Yeah. Um, and I think they'll want to keep the band back together with all the, with all the obvious success that they've had uh, so far here in 2022. So, yeah, even when this season is over, there's still going to be plenty to talk about, no doubt. Well, you just exactly. said that. You, 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 so you said all those. That means we're not signing the quarterback then. We're not signing Hurts. <laughs> no, Hurts is locked in. Hurts can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, they have a year to figure that out. Right. Um, if they can't agree to you know a deal or whatever hurts will have to play on you know the final year of his contract and he'll get a bump 
like up to he'll get like a, what's called a player performance escalator, uh, which will bump his salary up to like two or three million or something like that. But you know that's that's uh, chump change for a, you know an MVP candidate. So yeah, I, I think that something will get done there ultimately. They can structure contracts in which to, in a way where the cap hit in 2023 will be super low. But then, you know, in, in subsequent years, then, it, you know, it jacks up pretty high. So, yeah, they'll, they'll have to – the Eagles did a bad job of managing their roster after they won the Super Bowl in 2017. I thought Howie Roseman had, you know, three pretty bad off seasons, And then he came back in full force, and, and he brought the team back up to a Super Bowl kind of level. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, how they, he sort of changes the way he did things after that Super Bowl run and sort of what lessons were learned in terms of – uh, making tough decisions on guys that you maybe don't want to overpay and uh, w- which positions to prioritize and so and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, they, they, they sort of missed a window to be really dominant for a long time after that first Super Bowl run. It'll be interesting to see how, well, you know, what their plan is this time around. All right, JK, great stuff there, but you got to tell us, are we talking about an 11-1 team come Monday? When I read you in phillyboys.com on Sunday night slash Monday morning, are we talking about loss number two? Or the fact that the Eagles still have the best record in all of football. All right, I got them. Uh, so they have the ball, twenty-one twenty, opportunity to try to close out the game, and uh, they drive down, they kick a field goal, make it difficult for the Titans to come back and score a touchdown the other way. Titans have like a minute to do so, can't do it. Eagles win twenty-four twenty. 2420 birds, right on the number, as a matter of fact. It's four and a half. But if you're going to use that at point, all three of us, Johnny Mack and I both said, John picked the Titans. I picked the Eagles by a field goal. You got them by four. So we're uh, saying under the number, but at least you got them going to 11 and one. Jimmy, good yeah. stuff. Always a pleasure, buddy. We'll get you back on in a couple of weeks. Thanks for jumping into the mix today. Appreciate it, guys. That's Jim Kemsky from phillyvoice.com here with us on Birds. 365. All right, Barrett, I'm not going to make you make your pick just yet. I know you're sticking around. Uh, you and Tone are going to do the last uh, 15 minutes together. I got to jump over to CBS Sports Radio. Uh, I've got Eagles winning 23-20. Johnny Mack had Tennessee 24-23. What? Kemsky, we're all around the same score. Kemsky had Eagles 24-20. I'd love to know what you're going to pick, but I want you to hold on to your pick, and then I want you to give it to Tone. You and Tone are going to do the last segment together. Just give me a little preview, a little hint. It's going to be close. I, I don't. I think they're going to win by a touchdown. Put it like touchdown. that. Touchdown. All right, Barrett's got them winning and covering. Neither, none of the other three of us did. But keep it here. Barrett's going to bring you home. Tone's going to jump in. Uh, to guide the ship for the final segment. You know, John and I will be back on Monday to talk. Appreciate you, Jody. No, Barrett, I appreciate you. Thank you for filling in. Barrett's coming back with Tone. Keep it right here on Birds 365.